Okay, well what if I don't want to approximate the area under the curve, but I want to find the exact area? Okay, well I can do that. It's just going to take a lot of rectangles. Okay, so here's what I want you to kind of see, and I'm going to try to make this as uh, clear as possible here. So let's see if I can uh, draw a function that looks like this, and I want to find the exact area under this curve. And no, it's not a circle, so I can't just use the circle formula. Okay, well if I take a couple of couple of sub intervals here and I'm gonna use a different color I'm gonna use green to start off then let's just say that I do a right Riemann sum just for kicks here so if I do a right Riemann sum then that's gonna be here to here and then from here over and then from here over and then from basically no rectangle here since the y value is zero so there's our approximation obviously not a very good approximation Okay, well what happens if we increase, let's just see if we can double the number of subintervals. So let's go here, here, here. Okay, so let's double them up and see what happens. So now I'm gonna again take the right endpoint. Okay, so the right endpoint is here, 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 and then here, and then here, and here and also there. Okay, so hopefully what you've noticed now is that my red is a much better approximation than my green is. Okay, so the green was catching a lot of area that was outside of the curve and missing a lot of the area that was inside of the curve, and my red did a much better job. Now let's see if I can maybe try a different color here, uh, maybe like an orange, if that will show up. Okay, so if I try an orange and I try to double them again, so I go here, here, in between all of these, okay, then what you're going to notice is that I'm going to get much closer to the actual area. So I'm doing these triangles, or these uh, rectangles, sorry, okay, basically in the middle of all of these. Okay. And so what you can notice is that as I take more and more and more rectangles, I'm getting a better approximation of the area under that curve. And so the idea, and it sounds a little silly, and maybe you're like, well, how can we do that? But what we're going to do is we're going to take an infinite number of rectangles. Okay, well, what we're going to do then is we're going to add all of them together. So remember in pre-cal, whenever we want to add a bunch of things together, we use this sigma symbol. Okay, and I wrote it down there for a reason because I'm going to write something in front of it here in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from k equals to 1, and then I'm going to basically just multiply by the, or uh, add up the areas of the rectangle. So the areas of the rectangle are going to be the function values because all of these heights are function values, and we're going to be plugging in a plus k delta x, and then the width of all of these rectangles is whatever delta x is. So we're going to multiply by delta x. Now if I want to take infinitely many rectangles, we're going to put n right there, and then we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Okay, so this pretty much just needs to be memorized. It's really, these are really not hard problems. Okay, it's just the basically identifying what exactly it is that you need and uh, basically just plugging it into the formula. Now I'm also gonna write in here that delta x, the formula for delta x is b minus a over n. Okay, so example five, write the following definite integral as the limit of a Riemann sum. So the first thing I want to figure out is what is delta x? Well delta x is b minus a over n. So if I look here, b is 3 and a is 1. So this is going to be 3 minus 1 over n, which is 2 divided by n. So that's my delta x. Now if I want to write the following, uh, the definite integral as a limit, I need to have the limit statement. <clears throat> so the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation from k equals 1 to n of f of a plus k delta x. Well, let's first of all figure out what a plus k delta x is. So I'm gonna do some scratch work over here on the side. Well, a was given as one, so I'm gonna write that down. Plus k 
times delta x, which was 2 over n, which is really just 1 plus 2k over n. Okay, well, what the formula says here is that we do f of a plus k delta x, where f is the function that we are integrating. So in this case, we're integrating x to the fourth. And so f of a plus k delta x is just going to be what we found for a plus k delta x raised to the fourth power. So 1 plus 2k over n raised to the fourth. Okay, so now I'm ready to just plug that into my formula here. So f of a plus k delta x is going to be 1 plus 2k over n to the fourth multiplied by delta x, and delta x was 2 over n. Okay, so there's my final answer right there. Now, the reason I'm doing this problem on the summer assignment, okay, you might be like, well, that was a really hard question. I'm not really sure why you would put that on the summer assignment and expect us to try and do that by ourselves. Well, okay, it's not really by yourself because you have the video, but also this was probably the hardest multiple choice question on the exam. Um, on one of our practice exams and so I want you to get an early look at it so that when we do it in class it doesn't seem as foreign to you uh, when we do it there. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you. You just have to let me know. All right, talk to you guys later uh, for lecture seven.